Never put me on his beat. Okay, no yeah. I'm a baller. New Joe Biden, we back. Score NBA. Four on top. Jump, jump on the beat. Queen, Queen. Stand up. Nitty, nitty, Go. Holla, holla. Jump ball, you rap guys is a joke. I'm here to take the score and title. Without the green light for my coat. Man, don't make me have to smack your lineup. I'm Michael Jordan, y'all have with minors that rap vagina. All black, ski mask, love, tuck the thing. Drive slow, lights out like I love this game. See, I live this, y'all paint that pic. And y'all like magic, I'm starting to believe your dudes ain't that sick. Might see your boy scooping up a bird to get knowledge. Number one traffic, and I skip college. Snakes in the trenches, I beat those. Get injured, end up like Grant Hill on the bench in your street clothes. Talk about it real, guy, quick with a Glock. Don't mean to see through. Gunshot do you like Vancouver, make your team move. Let's be the NBA, never NBC. Yeah, rookie of the year, stash and brain pain. Never change before we can to the four. It's a number one draft pick that you get. Then you go to the NBA, never NBC. Rookie of the year, stash MVP. Jump on, never change before we can to the four. It's the number one draft pick that you get. Big sad, treat me like a sucker. Gather up your five, you may meet me at the rocker Put the heat to you fuckers Half man, half amazing with a clip in my boot Before five will make you skip to my loot Think about it, understand when I was younger I was all on my own So when I said three, two, I'm Welcome to the Genesis Men's Hour I'm your host, Wendell Ellis May 14, 2011 We're live and in action I'd also like to start out by thanking uh, Roger for such hot music. Every time we uh, introduce and come on the show, it's always sound a hot track. Although I think I heard the N word and some profane words. I, I don't know whether or not we have a three second delay on public access, but <laughs> it's all good. You have to love it. Live television at its finest. I'd like to give my shout outs. I'd like to give a shout out, of course, to my mom who passed away. Uh, last year on her birthday, always she was with us for a long time doing this television show. Also, I'd like to have a moment of silence for my The Ohio State Buckeyes. Trestle, free trestle, free trestle, free the five tattoo receiving, ring selling, jersey selling, shoulder pads, jock strap selling. <laughs> I think they sold everything in Columbus. <laughs> but we'd like to send a shout out to the Ohio State University. Uh, also, all of our local teams, uh, UC Bearcats, uh, their run uh, and the making the playoffs the tournament this year. It was a great year for the Bearcats. We look for uh, a better year next year. We're excited about uh, UC uh, really trying to uh, get back to where they were years ago, and maybe one day get over that final hurdle and winning another national championship. While well, we're in the season of moving from March Madness, and now we're into the NBA playoffs. And so we'd like to introduce you to a group of men that have crabs. Oh, and I'm sorry, <laughs> it's crabdribble.com. They don't have crabs, or at least I hope they don't have crabs. And if they do have crabs, that's fine, because they have medication for crabs. It's relatively easy to apply. Although I heard you have to shave everything off. So with no further ado, we'd like to uh, introduce the men from the Community Press newspaper. They're part of the sports division. Um, they also blog and they're also on Twitter. Uh, it's Jason, don't call me Brew Baker, Rob Dowdy, and of course, uh, North College Hills, Ben Wapple. Of course, we'll get to why that's so important here in a moment, clearly because of the OJ Mayo connection and see whether or not uh, Ben is successfully. Uh, a O.J. Mayo fan still, or whether or not uh, he has uh, thrown him under the bus. But it seems like he's no longer under the bus. I think he's off the bus, maybe driving the bus now. I think he's doing okay. So gentlemen, welcome to the Genesis Men's Hour. Oh, also this is a live television call-in show. So if your mama's out there, or your papa's out there, if, you, if your baby daddy, if your baby mama's out there, they can call. 651-3036 today. You can join us in this sports conversation with the sports experts. This is our version of Pardon the interruption times too. So, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Good to be here. So, how long have you guys been doing? Uh, I'm sitting next to Jason. That means you must be the man. Are you the leader of the Rat Pack? I'm not the actually. Fourth page Rat Pack. Rob's actually Rob, the leader put here. His finger up. Oh, I'm sorry, Rob. I'm the leader here. No. Oh, I'm flanked by my, my lieutenant. Yes, yes, he's flanked by his lieutenants. 
So, give us a history, some information on what you guys do, where you do it, how people can get the information uh, from your valuable insight from you guys. Uh, well, we started up uh, a few weeks before the season started, I think around September. Uh, we got a Twitter account, the Crab Jubal One. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on, you can find us on iTunes. Mm -hmm. uh, the podcast is at thecrabdribble.com. And basically, we just uh, we just talk NBA basketball. We try to keep it fun. Try to keep it light. But um, got a little got some facts in there too. And <laughs> some facts. We're big, yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. Facts. Just a little. Oh, Jeez, got the mostly, big. Yeah, some facts. <laughs> mostly opinion. A little bit of facts. Okay, okay. Yeah. It, was like, it was like two days before the season started. And Rob was like, "Hey, you want to start a podcast?" Yeah. He sounds good. Yeah. Really so we just kind of started it. It started as a podcast. Like mm -hmm. We're going to put it out every week. And then uh, it kind of grew from there. Like, oh, okay, maybe we should do a blog. And uh, we've got Jason on board, and we've been, we've been writing at thecrabdribble.com. And, and we've done a podcast, I think, every single week, the whole season, just, just for one week. Just finished episode 33. Last yeah. night. So. Wow. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. So your, your focus is primarily, and, of course, I'm outside the camera. Somebody got they can't see me, man. <laughs> at least I look smaller on camera, though. If you cut me in half, no, no, man, leave me in half. I want to be smaller, man. I want to be smaller. I'm like, you know, okay, this is what you got to love about live TV. But you, you see that pearl of watch, though? I'm still smiling. See, we don't do the podcast live. We, we do, like, a 30-minute podcast. It takes us, like, four hours. So we're <laughs> wow. A lot, yeah, a lot of live. editing. You know, you're not used to <laughs> a lot of editing. We don't get the value of editing. Our editing is in motion. You see the camera starts wiggling. It's going to be interesting. You know, this is like yeah. a live bootleg cast. So you see people <laughs> walking in front of the screen. I mean, we love it. You have to love it. We love it. We love it. So you started NBA. And so is that your passion? Yeah. Now, are all of you writers for the community news press? Yes. Uh, yes. Press newspaper. Yes. yes. And all in the sports area? Actually, uh, no. I don't necessarily in the sports no. area. None of you are in the sports? Do a lot of general news stuff. So what stuff, the hell? Yeah. I mean, are you people? <laughs> well, we want to do, we want to do sports. <laughs> Someone has to check the papers. I don't know whether or not these people are qualified <laughs> to a, talk about a, sports when they none of them write about sports as a profession. That's the thing about <laughs> podcasting. You don't have to be a professional to do it. So. Oh, so, oh, yeah. So you're admitting <laughs> the fact that you're just bringing it, just pulling it straight just, out of your ass. Just big fans. <laughs> oh, just big yeah. fans. That's good. Yeah. I'm a big fan, too. <laughs> Although I'm a lighter fan than I was last month. I've lost like 25 pounds since our last television show so I'm back on yes right. I'm on. so I'm back five weeks and so I'm back on the wagon uh, I'm back uh, actively engaged in uh, my weight loss struggle so let's talk NBA if that's where uh, you guys started your bootleg podcast <laughs> <laughs> that's the proper term yes yeah, I like that uh, let's start NBA uh, where do you start I don't know you guys are the experts uh, I'm a fan certainly but uh, I'm not an expert uh, but I'm certainly a fan let's start Who's your odds on favor to win and take this puppy home? Well, I think it's got to be the Miami Heat. Yeah. They've been playing fantastic ball. Uh, they've picked it up a lot. Since the playoffs started, they've been playing, I think, their best ball of the year. So they got quite a matchup against the Bulls, number one versus number two in the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. But I think the Heat got to be the favorite right now. Well, they've shown they can close games now, which they didn't always show in the regular season. They stepped up in the clutch against Boston a couple times, and I think that's, I don't know, I, I definitely got to give the Heat the edge right now. It's tough for us. Me and Rob do not like the Heat. Jason <laughs> is the uh, in-house Miami fan. I'm biased. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I got to admit, Miami looks great. I think Chicago looks really good. You know, mm -hmm. Derrick Rose is probably the best player in the playoffs maybe so far, but I just don't know if they have enough help for Derrick Rose right now. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Miami in six to the finals, and I, I don't really like anybody in the West with the L.A. out. You know, to give Miami much of a run. So you don't think that uh, Nowitzki can bring it home? You don't think Dallas? Well, I, I love. Dirt. Come on, now who's going back to with like, dirt and for Miami? Well, it, that that just depends on who wins that game seven uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Memphis uh, against Oklahoma City. Yeah, I don't know. If Dallas Oklahoma City, that, yeah. if Oklahoma City wins, I think uh, I think Kevin Durant, Dirk Nowitzki battle it out, and then it just mm -hmm. just who you like. I, I like Kevin Durant in that uh, situation. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. his running oh, yeah. partner too, Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Also a big fan here. Wow, Westbrook. Wow, yeah. he's looked impressive. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, you can't ask more for him. A a a, a kind of sort of point. Shooting, right. scoring. Yeah. A lot of people talk they about they couldn't stop it. Twenty-two about, years old, uh, you know, LeBron yeah. and, and Dwayne teaming up, but uh, Oklahoma City's got their own little duo oh, there. Dwayne can, Westbrook. I mean, they, that's I mean, that's a big power. Difference. That's yeah, a power couple. Absolutely. That's what we were talking about last night on the podcast. Dallas, as good as they've looked, they haven't really played. They play Portland and LA. They haven't faced a team that necessarily has a guy who can has get into speed. the lane yeah. and, and really just penetrate no. the defense like a, a Russell Westbrook. Right. Can. No. So yeah, you know, we'll see how they well, do when they play him. 
But they, you know, they played Portland mm -hmm. in the first round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kids and, had to uh, guard Miller and uh, Derek yeah. Fisher, Westbrook's there, yeah. or Conley. They're both a totally different story, different kind of players. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. That's true. And I'm not going to throw OJ under the bus just for the record. OJ's great. <laughs> okay. OJ's oh, been absolutely. good. Bill absolutely. Walker playing for the Knicks. Uh, he's a solid Very person perfect. coming off the bench. He's been solid. Absolutely. He's having a solid career, and that's how you string one of those Juwan Howard careers together. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a. I mean, that's how. Literally. I mean, that's the career you want. Spanning three decades. Yeah. I mean, three <laughs> decades. You don't want that. Yeah, that. That. That career of being the star and having to go out as a starter. Right. You want that six man coming off the bench, play your role, be a, like like Battier or Boozer. That I mean, of course, Boozer, you know, is in the starting role, but Battier, I mean, you know, and uh, he may be also now, but when you look at those careers and, you know, Grand Hills, I mean, those 15, 16, 17 year careers are extremely impressive. When we look at uh, the Bulls, I mean, is Ding dinged up or, I mean, how's his back? Uh, Have you guys heard anything? He's looking Have the Bulls I called think he's you? Okay, right now uh, they are not returning our calls. Actually, <laughs> they're not returning yeah. the Bulls. Those, those bastards. <laughs> trying to get a hold. Luol Deng is not in the phone book. I don't know if you knew that. Or not. No, yeah. we tried, but yeah, he looks okay. I mean, he's always kind of a question mark. Uh, he's got a, a long injury history, so you never know when that. How those guys do? That next fall might be the yeah. one that takes him out for a game or two. And he's putting up. He's playing forty-five minutes a game. He's yeah. going to be key for them, for sure. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. He's, he's, he's absolutely key. What about Jaquem Noah? I think, uh, well, Rob mentioned this last night. I think he is kind of the key for the Bulls. If yes. he can come out and establish himself down low and put up uh, which, you know, one of those 10 point, 15 rebound 15, nights. 15 and kind of yeah, I would say the 10, 10 points, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's not a He's, not a, he's not a scorer, but if he can kind of set the physical tone and get the energy of the crowd going, which he's pretty good at, then – you know, the Bulls can definitely knock him off. Miami's yeah. not strong, especially at the center position. No. And Noah's going to have the advantage. Yeah, he certainly has the advantage. And if he can give him uh, the 10 points, then that certainly is going to be a huge opportunity. I think it's, uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to watch this process, particularly for Miami with everything they went through. And uh, Cleveland, South Beach, and sorry, Cleveland, I'm picking South <laughs> Beach. Uh, but I think that when you look at what they're able to put together and the fact that you have the Lakers out, uh, with their front court. I mean, to me, that was going to be the challenge for Miami was dealing with that front court of the Lakers. Right. Uh, let's talk about the Lakers briefly. Of course, that's my team. And this was the worst year in sports I've ever faced in my life. <laughs> I cried from beginning to end. Uh, I cried my Bengals. I cried my Cowboys. I cried. And I had started watching basketball earlier than any normally, you know, most years because the Cowboys are always going to do something and get into the playoffs or come close or something, or at least it's gonna be fun. This wasn't a fun year for me. And so I started watching, and I changed my Facebook, updated my picture to, a, to one of the, our championship rings for the Lakers. So let's look at the Lakers, and we can also put the Celtics in this conversation. Who's on the access van? Who's riding the access van? Who's going off into the sunset? I think they keep, I think both teams keep most of the parts, like Boston, you know, big three look pretty good. Mm -hmm. I still think they got another year, maybe two. In the LA, I think they're all right. Like I know, obviously, Pau Gasol looked horrible. The horrible. Dallas, but, you know, I think he's all right. I think they just need to give him, you know, some more rest. Rob blocked about that this week. I'm not trying to steal yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's thunder. fine. No, I think they need I a- I am gonna steal your thunder. <laughs> Let me just finish. No, no pun intended with thunder. <laughs> <laughs> no, that front court, it's good, right? I mean, mm -hmm. what are you, how are you going to improve that? Odom, Gasol, Bynum. Just make sure Bynum keeps his jersey on. <laughs> right. yeah. Keep the elbows down. I think they need a back. They just need a backup center. They need just some, some uh, a couple of small parts. The bench needs to be tweaked a little bit. But when you look at uh, you know trying to trade a, a big piece, who are you going to get? In, you know, they want. They probably would like to move Ron Artest. He's under underproduced. He's played well on the defensive end, but offensively he's a mess still. Uh, you put him on the trading block, but who's going to? Who's going to take them and give you a younger piece in uh, yeah. in, in exchange? So yeah. you kind of I think I think they're kind of stuck where they are. They need to tweak the bench a little bit. I would like to get a, a faster uh, point guard, someone who's not you know 35, 36. <laughs> if it's <laughs> that's out there, yeah, that's possible. I think there might be wow. two or three people at this table faster. <laughs> So well, who's who's not? What are you trying to say? I'm not passing. No, I, you were number one. Oh, okay, that's what you're I'm the host. Saying. You're number one. I'm yeah, saying. I'm saying. I'm with the most. Of <laughs> but a shot at me. I don't know. But Matt Barnes, uh, see, to me, he screwed up the whole season beating his wife. So once he beat his wife, 
and he's been beating his wife, man. To me, it was just karma. Karma came back. It just karma came back <laughs> to bite us in the ass with Matt Barnes, man. I mean, you see his wife all swelled up and eyes blackened. She drops the charges again. And I'm thinking to myself, he ruined it for me because 